In the previous video, we took a tour of PyCharm's UI and all its IDE glory, but maybe you don't want the big IDE layout. Minimal and personalized is the new sexy. Did you know you can strip down PyCharm's IDE UI, add a new theme, customize the key map, even install plugins? Well, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Paul Everett, JetBrains Developer Advocate, and welcome to our PyCharm Getting Started series. Wait, you haven't clicked subscribe? Our data shows that 80% of you haven't subscribed to our PyCharm channel. These videos, well, they need to get made and I need a job, so click subscribe and keep me on the payroll. In the previous video, we saw the basic building blocks of PyCharm's UI. Now let's dive into some UI customizations that should make you more comfortable to explore PyCharm and become more productive right away. PyCharm is going to be your home for Python code, and we're sure you're going to want to make it look and feel like home. Want to see some of the most common ways to add some home comforts? Well, let's start now. The very first thing you may want to do, change the UI theme. Go to Preferences or Settings, depending on your OS, and in the Appearances section, you can see that PyCharm comes with a few predefined themes. But there's also a variety of custom ones to choose from. Let's look in the Plugins section and search the Marketplace for Theme. Let's install one of the most popular themes, dark purple theme. And there you go, PyCharm has now installed and switched to the community plugin for the dark purple theme. What if you want to quickly check what the other themes you've installed look like? You can go back to preferences settings and change the current theme in appearance and behavior appearance, or use the switch pop-up. Press Control and Backtick, select Theme, and move through all the available themes in one go. That's a look at theming, everybody's favorite make yourself at home customization. But there's more, as we'll see next. We just looked at themes to change the colors and whatnot of the IDE, but what if we don't want to look like an IDE at all? Let's see how to get a lean, mean UI while keeping the IDE. In the previous segment, we looked at the switch pop-up for changing themes. This isn't the only thing the switch pop-up is good for. For example, if you want to make your workspace less cluttered, you can use this pop-up to switch to Zen mode which can be very helpful whenever you need to remove distractions and focus on your code. What else? You can change the position of tool windows. This lets you move them around to other parts of the IDE using your mouse. You can even make a tool window float on top of the editor or detach it completely so that you can view it independently on a different monitor. When done, you can redock it. Another thing you can do to reduce clutter is hiding some UI elements. First, you can customize the status bar by right-clicking it and removing any status widgets that you're not using. If you click the quick access button located on the status bar, you can get rid of the tool window bar. This will make a little more space in the editor. With the tool window bar hidden, you can still access all the tool windows by hovering over the quick access icon and choosing what you need or by using the dedicated shortcut for it. For example, command plus one brings up the project tool window. It's a toggle, so repeat it to close it. The fastest way to toggle the visibility of UI elements is the find action command. Command or control plus shift plus A. 
Let's say you're not going to use breadcrumbs and you don't want to see them. You can use find action, then look for breadcrumbs, and then turn them off from there. That's a quick look at the look part of look and feel. It's easy to turn off and turn back on parts of the UI. Let's now turn to the feel part of look and feel. As you make yourself at home in PyCharm, you want to keep your hands on the keyboard and use the mouse less. Let's take a look at using and customizing the key maps. We'll start in settings or preferences. In the key map section, you can choose the key map you want to use, reassign existing shortcuts, and create custom shortcuts for the actions that don't have anything associated with them. Let's say you want to know what shortcut is assigned to the event log action, which is under tool windows. This action doesn't have a key binding, so we're going to assign a custom one to it. Let's make it one plus two. Now, whenever we press one, then two, we will open the event log. What if you don't know what is the shortcut for an action such as toggling the project tool window? Back in key map settings, in the input box, type in part of the action name. You will then see a listing of actions and the key binding currently in use. One last customization for key maps. You can change to a different bundled key map. In fact, you can even install plugins for custom key maps. Keeping your hands on the keyboard means customizing it to make it work the way you want. Now that we've shown that, Let's close out with some other customization options. Apart from theming and key maps, there are lots of other things you might want to customize. If you don't know where a specific setting you want to change is located, just look for it. Let's say we want to change the default font. Now we can only see the applicable sections with the word font in them. Looks like we need the one called font. I'm going to use Fira code and enable ligatures for it. See, the editor has now changed even more. The same applies to all the other settings. Let's say we want to change some code style settings for Python, why not? We can look for code style, then go to the Python section and make changes there. Let's change, for example, the hard wrapping setting to wrap our lines at 79 characters to follow the PEP8 convention. The settings preferences window has, as you can see, many options. All let you make the IDE look as much or as little as you'd like. All right, in this video, we went through some of the UI customization that will help you get more comfortable with PyCharm. Of course, PyCharm is an IDE and has multiple configurable settings. We've covered just the basics. I encourage you to play around and explore appearances and behaviors or editor settings, plugins, as well as other preferences that we haven't talked about yet. If you need some help, the link to the documentation is in the description on this video. In the next video, we're going to see how to configure local and remote interpreters in PyCharm. See you there.